everybody, this is Island Hopper TV and today we're gonna to show you the best things to do in Kathmandu. Let's do it. That's right, Island Hoppers. We're coming to you from Kathmandu with 21 things to do here in Nepal's capital. First thing to do is cruise around in a rickshaw. And this literally was the first thing I did right when I got into Kathmandu. I was staying in the neighborhood known as Tamil. I w and I was walking around doing some window shopping and then someone came up to me, approached me about a rickshaw. I negotiated the price before I actually went out and I got to see a lot of Kathmandu I probably wouldn't have known. The tour around Tamil took about an hour and cost like five bucks. And here we are now at Darbur Square. You can see the oldest temple right here. This one is Kathmandu Durbar Square. It is one of three UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the Kathmandu Valley. Just so you know, Durbar means palace. A little later on, we will take you to the Paton Durbar Square, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But here at the Kathmandu Square, you will find a variety of different temples related to the Kama Sutra and several other deities around the Hindu faith, dating all the way back to the third century. It's important to note that in 2015, there was in 7.9, magnitude earthquake that devastated most of Kathmandu, including this area of the Kathmandu Durbar Square. Here you'll find very intricate and meticulous carved facades characteristic of, of the Nuwar architecture designs. The central square is surrounded by palace complex that dates all the way back to the Shah periods and the Mala. The restoration has been going on for eight years now and there are still some original structures but really a lot of this is the restoration that's been taking place so keep that in mind as you're going around. And here in front of the temple also known as the Kama Sutra you can see 24 different positions uh, of styles from the Kama Sutra and if you look right here on the pillars you'll see they have uh, Sanskrit writing right there on the pillars. And one thing that I realized walking around the temples of Kathmandu and getting a guided tour from a local was I had a lot of misconceptions about what exactly a Kama Sutra was or any of these deities. Really, a lot of misinformation is out there in the world, but when you come here, you can get it straight from the locals and it'll make more sense. Burning incense and candles is something you'll see around here, so there is a bit of smoke billowing in the air. Yeah, and if you look right behind me here, you can see the new palace, which comes from the 19th century. And right over here is the 17th century old palace. Two different palaces right in the same area. And here we are now on Freak Street. The reason they call it Freak Street is because in the 1960s, strange hippies used to conjugate right here and hang out at the cafes. So the locals ended up calling it Freak Street. Many of the hippies were actually drawn to this area for the Ayurvedic medicine and some of the medicines that actually were allowed and legal here that weren't allowed elsewhere. So there was a lot of reasons why the hippies wanted to be here. Yeah, so as we're walking around here in the alleyways, you'll notice these beams are holding up the house. He was telling me that the old houses are actually the ones that survived the earthquake and the new buildings were the ones that fell down. That was the earthquake that happened in 2015. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of history going on in this area of the Durbar Square of Kathmandu. Now what we're going to do is go check out some mandala art and do some shopping. I actually ended up going to one of the art schools here where I got to learn more about mandalas, the variety of different mandalas that you can actually purchase, different sizes. Each one is more intricate or less intricate than the other one. Some are done by the Dalai Lama. And mandalas like this one, the Wheel of Life, which symbolizes the Buddha ascending because of enlightenment. He will never reincarnate on earth again. So once you achieve enlightenment, you don't incarnate on earth again, according to the Buddhist. At this particular art school, if you buy a mandala from here, you're supporting students who actually paint these. And the prices start at around 35 US dollars and can go up beyond $200, depending on the intricacy of the actual painting, how much detail goes into it. And now here we are at the Asan Market, right in the heart of Kathmandu. Also known as the Asan Bazaar, it is a ceremonial and market residential square here. 
I found it to be a good place to find great deals on jackets and other clothing that will keep you warm. I found good deals on pashmina, cashmere, and other types of warm, traditional Nepali clothing. I also bought a jacket here. I was gonna buy a North Face jacket in Tamil, but then I came down here and I saw that it was about one-tenth the price for basically the same kind of quality. And I didn't need it to last me very long, but I needed something that was gonna keep me warm. And I got a feathered down jacket here for around 20 bucks. And as we continue to show you around Kathmandu, I wanna let you know that we're posting a lot more videos of the behind the scenes of what went into making this video hear about Kathmandu on our other channel, Island Hopper TV Travel Highlights. If you go onto our homepage, you'll see a variety of different new channels that we have where we highlight hotels as well as the behind the scenes and the foods. And so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go inside one of these Pashmina cashmere stores and see what they got exactly. This is where I'm actually gonna get a wool or a Pashmina sweater as well as a scarf you'll see the interactions and what goes into the actual purchase but you can see there's a lot of colors here and i really enjoyed that variety of colors because when in rome do as romans do but in this case when in nepal do as nepali do and that's going to mean getting colorful and getting warm because when you go up into the himalayas you have to remember this is the highest mountain range in the world and it's right here in Nepal, sharing the Himalayan mountain range with China to the north and Bhutan and India. And here I am explaining to the shop owner exactly what it is that I'm looking for. You do? Yeah. You can just uh, easy to wear, you can make like this. Yes, sir. You can wear like this, make a tight little bit. And this will keep me warm tonight? Yeah. What do you have for my my arms? For your arms, you can take sweater. We have a sweater also. Uh, show me the sweater. This is the Casper sweater. Okay, how much is that? This one also to you, thirty-five dollars. Yeah, uh, if you need something cashmere or uh, cashmere or handmade items from Nepal, yeah, I can give you on the best rate in Kathmandu. So please visit our store, Raj Handicrafts, uh, in Indra Chowk, Kathmandu. Thank you. So I've got a cashmere scarf, and I've got a cashmere wool sweater. It's a wool, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, from a yak. And uh, this is how you stay warm here in Kathmandu. Okay, so now that you've done some shopping and you're quite warm, now you can do a helicopter ride up into the Himalayas. Now this is one of the big things that people like to do when they arrive here, whether it be jungle trekking or going up into the Everest base camp, which is a big thing to do. So getting up there, you can take an airplane and then hike it out and take a bus, or you can actually take the helicopters. Most people just go to Everest base camp. They don't actually hike to the top of Everest. Now let's talk about food. Here I have mutton. Mutton is a form of lamb or goat, but then you also have the breads that go along with it, like the naan. Then you have some Chinese influence, like beef congee right here, which is a porridge. You also have dim sum and some spare ribs. And I had some sumai, as you can see right here. I also enjoyed some rice biryani, as you can see right here, and some pot stickers, which were really just steamed. And then you gotta enjoy some nightlife here in Kathmandu. So I did most of my nightlife around Old Durbar. This is right here in Tamil. They have many different nightclubs and bars, pubs that you can experience. I really had no idea there was even a nightlife in Kathmandu, but I'll tell you right now, if you go down to Tamil, you will definitely find it seven days a week, starting at around 6 p.m. Another thing I recommend is doing some sort of haircut or massage or salon. In this case, I ended up getting a Nepali haircut, which obviously every country I go to, I try to do one of these and see if I can pick up on anything that's new or different. Here with the haircut, you do get a massage of your arms and your back after the cut. But hey, I found the treatment to be worth every penny that I paid. I think it was around 30 to 40 US. And now we're here at Changdari Hills. They actually have a lift that you can go to the top in a cable car. So to get the round trip ticket, it's around 22 US. If you just wanted to go one way, that's around 13. It also depends on what country you're coming from because if you're coming from the SA 
a RC countries or your Chinese, your price is going to be much different. And as you'll notice at many of these tourist spots in Kathmandu and across Nepal, there's like a two-tiered uh, payment system. I would say that on average, the SAARC countries pay about one-fourth what other foreign visitors pay. So whereas in one case I might pay 10, a SAARC country might pay two or three dollars. Now here we are at the Monkey Temple right up here on the hill. We're gonna walk around and show you the beautiful views and the temple. Also known as Fayambu Nath, which is actually the self-reliant one or self-existent. It's the oldest temple here in Nepal actually. So when you go up there, head up to the Monkey Temple and you'll get great views as well as a really cool World Heritage Site to explore, walk around, and understand, discover. There is wild monkeys and stray dogs all around here. My advice to you is you can admire from a distance, but don't get too close and try and pet either the dogs or the monkeys, and that just comes from personal experience. Dealing with both because all it takes is a scratch or a bite, and you may end up with an infection. And now here we are at the Garden of Dreams. Back here in the city center of Kathmandu, this here is nearby Tamil. There's a few things that you can do within walking distance in a half a day, and Garden of Dreams is one of those activities. I would say spend around 30 minutes to an hour walking around here and observing what a Shangri-La type garden would be like or would have been like long ago. The thing is, it's right here in the middle of the city, so you don't really get that nature experience that you might expect from a Shangri-La. This garden was built in the 1920s and it is known as the Garden of Six Seasons. And again, with the two tiered entry fee processing here, it is around a thousand rupees for a foreign tourist. If you're Chinese or SARC, it's half the price, it's around 500. Now, here we are at the Neron Haiti. Uh, Palace Museum. You actually can't bring a camera in there, so it's 1,000 rupee. I've already paid that. I'm gonna have to put my camera in the actual locker, but I'll let you know afterwards how it is. So this was the main diplomatic palace where they'd welcome foreign diplomats to meet with Nepali leaders and rulers. So it does have a great deal of history. You'll see a lot of taxidermy in there. Here we are at the Golden Temple. This here Golden Temple is actually in Patan near the Durbar Square, which we will be showing you a little later on. But the Golden Temple here is very interesting, especially as it applies to the Nepalese culture. There's something you need to know is that in Nepal, they actually are Hindu, but they practice the Buddhist philosophy. After all, Siddhartha, he was from here in Nepal, born about three hours away. And this here golden temple was actually built by King Bhaskar Varman in the 12th century. It was actually built at the location where a rat chases a cat and rats were still being fed here on the site until 1994. As you know, all animals are respected in the Buddhist and Hindu culture. So now here we are at Patan Durbar Square, which is basically the Durbar Palace. We're gonna walk around and see this beautiful place. Now this was an area that was extremely devastated by the earthquake, so they're still rebuilding it, although it has recently reopened. And here you'll find ancient monuments, temples, statues, some forms of idols, as well as shrines. There are over 600 stupas, and there's 55 major temples for you to observe. Most of it is built out of red bricks. There's also 136 courtyards. There are several bathing areas that you'll see. This stream water actually is coming down from the Himalayas, which is really cool because the Himalayas are such a majestic mountain range being the tallest in the world. And so to know that you can bathe here or people have bathed here, that's what's cool about this fact. Now here we are at the Darahara Tower. It's actually still under construction. They're rebuilding it from the devastation that happened from the earthquake. But it's about to open soon and you can go up to the top of the tower, you'll get great views. But this is an ancient or old school relic here in Kathmandu. 
And this is what I really consider the center of the city. And here we are at the new road. The new road here is the trendy area of the city. It's kind of a new area. You'll also see a gate when you enter. Although it's really not that modern by global standards. Although for Kathmandu, this is where you would go to get some modern shopping done. Maybe you need some electronics or something. That's all going to be done here at the new road. It's definitely easier to walk around here than it is to drive because it does get congested. And, and now here we are at Pasu Patinat. We're going to explore around here and see what's going on. This is actually one of the most significant temples in all of Nepal and even in Hindu world culture. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that was set up in 1979. The thing about this place that might not be for everybody and discretion should be advised is because they do cremation here. So you will see bodies burning along the river here. This is the Bogmati River. While here, I would suggest getting a guide to understand more. And on that note, guys, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV from Kathmandu. If you guys enjoyed this one, please do consider watching some more of our other travel guides and subscribing to our other channels where we showed more details about Nepal and Kathmandu. See you on the next one. You can watch our Bangkok travel guide next or our Doha, Qatar travel guide.